Oh my god, dude. Black, and then brown, all the way down to your tail. God damn it, dude. And that is my great work of trying to hang up a curtain rod. I apparently suck at it. But the reason being is because uh, my grandma on my mom's side is coming to live with us for a week and she's going to be living in my room for the time being. So I have to put up curtains and then uh, I got to move all my stuff out and take some of my stuff down at the same time. and. I'm going to be living either in the living room or in the master bedroom for like a week and then, uh, then I get to have my room back, so... I can already tell this day is going to be very productive and crappy at the same time. One sleeping baby. Two sleeping babies. Onions. Meat, seasoned. And bell peppers. Orange, red, and green. Can you guess what I'm making? Yeah, well, I'll give you a chance to think about it. And so begins my grilling skills. But need I say more? I know I'm in the rock at this. Well, there's the meat all sliced up and ready to go. And then there's the peppers. So I'm going to throw those on. And then I'll go from there. Oh yeah, got those peppers sizzling. Got some onions in there going. If only we had smell-o-vision. You could probably smell how good that is. <sighs> Smells delicious. Flour tortilla, cheese, sour cream. You guys guess yet? If you haven't figured this out by now, then something is obviously wrong with you. Okay, so if you guys haven't figured it out by now, this is what I'm made. Fajitas! That's the way how I make them. It's the meat on the bottom, and then the vegetables, the bell peppers and the onions on top of that and then a scoop of sour cream and sprinkled on some cheese and uh, good to go. So uh, yeah, proof comes to show that guys can cook too. Not just women, but guys especially. But those who are chefs for daily life as a career don't count. Guys like me, I'm not even a chef. I'm not even, I don't have a job right now as a moment. But, um, but yeah. Case could come to show that uh, guys can cook. Well, guys, that was delicious. But now, um, on the other side, sorry, I had to start my dryer again. But um, so if anybody is looking for a personal chef to cook the meals, or if they can't because of their busy work schedule, or if they're just too lazy. But if you're lazy, then something is obviously wrong with you. Yeah, you, the person in the back. Yeah. The one back there, behind, yeah, you, ye, yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about, yeah, you. Anyways, but um, if you guys need a personal chef, I'd be more than willing to do that for you. Cook, you know, meals like that for you, depending on what you want, um, for a steady rate. And, uh, yeah, pretty sure everybody will be happy with my mad cooking skills. Well, guys, I kind of screwed up on uh, odds and ends. Um... I don't know if you guys remember that I did a uh, holiday edition of uh, Odds and Ends uh, a while back and uh, I said there was two parts. Well, I actually did some digging around and uh, actually I noticed this like a few days ago because they're using the newspaper as uh, potty training stuff for my, uh, uh, for my puppy, for Lily at the moment. But um, I noticed that I skipped a few of them, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this uh, Saturday Holiday Part 3 edition of uh, Odds and Ends of the awards. Now the first three I'm going to read, I've read them before, which are pretty ridiculous, but the last one is uh, really weird. And I haven't read it before, but um, even though I've already read the first three, uh, I'm still going to read it to you guys, so uh, here we go. The 
Let's Go to the Mountains Instead award. In England, in September, explosive experts were called to the Isle of Sheepery in Kent to remove 26 bombs, including two submarine depth charges and at least six 10 pound motor bombs that washed up on a nude beach. Then, earlier this month, the British Navy located another 61 bombs along the small stretch of sand known as Lays Down Beach. Some of the 87 pieces of ordnance unearthed range from death charges to bullets, date back to the late 19th century. North Kent Coast Guard manager Colin Irwin, who oversaw the Navy's control of the explosion, told the UK's Telegraph, quote, it was quite a find. According to Irwin, quote, a lot of shooting and planes exercises happened around Laysdown. Sometimes the shells wouldn't go off when dropped from a plane or shot from a rifle, but be cushioned by the mud and not explode. Laysdown Beach is a longtime English tourist attraction. In addition, according to the UK Naturist Fact File, the east side of Laysdown is the popular nudist beach in daily, quote, regularly used by 20 to 30 naturists with up to 100 on busy weekends. It's got to be really awkward. I mean, you're going to have bombs showing up on a nude beach. You take one step and then kablooey, you're naked and then you just got blown to smithereens. <laughs> Rough way to go. The World's Worst Client Award. In Washington, Joshua Monson, a 28-year-old felon drug charge suspect, made a reputation for himself by stabbing his lawyer in the neck with a pencil and then doing it again and then doing the same with his replacement. Following the first two stabbings, the judge in Monson's case ordered him restraint from future, from future court appearances. Monson's third lawyer, Jesse Cantor, argued that Monson couldn't get a fair trial if juries saw him shackled to a restraint chair. The judge agreed, which was a bad luck for Cantor. In early November, Monson reportedly reached across the table, grabbed a pen, and stabbed his new attorney in the head while jurors were listening to opening statements. Monson, who was fitted with an electric stun cuff at the time, was quickly subdued following the attack. Snohomish County Superior Court Judge David Kurtz refused to declare a, a mistrial, however, and ordered Monson to represent himself in court. That went about as well as you might expect. On November 3rd, Monson was convicted of a drug possession. Monson still faces a second-degree murder charge in the January 2nd shooting of 30-year-old Brian Jones. No word on who his attorney in that case might be. <laughs> Talk about crazy, right? You mean, you got to be really, really crazy in order to uh, stab your attorney, t both your attorneys, one to represent you and then the other one to replace you and then that other one. <sighs> this guy's got some serious, serious issues. The End Is Nay Award. Now, if you like zombies, you're going to love this for anybody who's a zombie kind of person. In Arizona, two residents at an eastern Arizona apartment complex were attacked and bitten by a man claiming to be a zombie. The White Mountain Independent reported that Jack Ray Murphy, 19, was arrested on October 24th and charged with felony aggravated assault. According to the police report, Murphy bit two people at the Pines apartment complex in Sholo. Police believe Murphy was high on a synthetic marijuana substitute called Spice when he was arrested. According to witnesses, Murphy stumbled into the parking lot of the Pines bleeding from his left hand. The female victim, who is a nurse, and the complex maintenance man went to ask Murphy if he needed help. After it was determined that Murphy's hand was broken, the maintenance man went back to his apartment to call police. It was then that Murphy allegedly attacked the nurse, grabbing her forearm and biting a chunk of flesh and muscle out of it. Ugh. Hearing the woman screaming, the maintenance man ran back and tried to stop Murphy from chewing on her arm. Murphy responded by biting the maintenance man's arm. The maintenance man slammed Murphy's head into a metal railing, breaking it off from the stairs. Undeterred, Murphy began advancing on and, quote, hissing at the maintenance man. 
The maintenance man pulled a 24-inch pipe from a car and told Murphy he would hit him in the head if he did not stop. Murphy then informed the maintenance man that he was a zombie and was going to, quote, eat his brains. Murphy lunged at the victim and was struck in the head with the metal pipe. Seemingly unaffected by the blow, the would-be zombie presented, pressed his attack and was st struck, on the, struck a second time on the head. According to the White Mountain Independent, quote, the second blow had the desired effect. Murphy ran away and was later arrested at his older sister's house. He was released from jail two days later after his felony aggravated assault charges were reduced to a misdemeanor assault by the county attorney's office. office. Okay, one, if you're high on spice and you claim to be a zombie and you bite someone's arm off, that is assault, first of all. Secondly, how the hell could you reduce it from assault to a misdemeanor? That is just, it just doesn't make sense, but that's how it is in Arizona. People are crazy like that. And finally, the last story of this uh, edition is the, the I Think We've Got a Love Connection for That Zombie in Arizona Award. In Florida, a homeless senior citizen in a wheelchair was attacked by a 22-year-old woman claiming to be a vampire at a vacant Hooters restaurant in St. Petersburg. Milton Ellis, 69, told police he met Josephine Smith on the street where she, said, where she said she was waiting for a relative from Pescaloya to come pick her up. Ellis invited Smith over to the porch of the empty restaurant to get out of the rain. Quote, he was, quote, he was saying, staying near the overhang near the vacant Hooters restaurant, so he thought it might be a good place for her to stay. Spokesperson Mike Pertz of the St. Petersburg Police Department told the St. Petersburg Times. According to Ellis, he fell asleep in his motorized wheelchair and awoke to find Smith on top of him. Quote, I am a vampire. I'm going to eat you. Smith reportedly said and then bit Ellis in the on his face, arm, and lip. The blooded Ellis was able to escape and call 911. He was given stitches to close his wounds at a hospital and later released. Officers located Smith, bloody and half-naked, near the scene of the attack. Smith told authorities she had no recollection, recollection of the attack and could not explain why she was naked and covered in blood. She has been charged with aggravated battery on an elderly person and is being held in Pinellas County Jail on a $50,000 bond. Wow. First zombies, now vampires. Next thing you know, you're going to hear a story about a freaking werewolf wannabe running around and like tearing people's faces off and all this other crazy-ish. But um, So anyways, guys, I apologize, like I said before, about this being uh, another uh, part three of uh, the Odds and Ends Holiday Awards edition. But uh, I didn't know until like two days ago, so I just wanted to let you guys know in advance. So... I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed those as much as I always do, and uh, I guess we will see you next Thursday for another edition of uh, Odds and Ends.